persuade undecided voters in crucial swing states to vote against Barack Obama. He also detailed plans for Senate and House races and joked, we should sink Todd Akin. If he's found mysteriously murdered, don't look for my whereabouts. Um, this was a reporter who happened to get into this, um, uh, into this super PAC uh, fundraiser, super PAC fundraiser. And so they want Todd Aiken out because it makes people think about reproductive rights, something they want to very much keep under wraps, though they're dealing with this issue every single day. Um, I bumped into another Missouri delegate who was the Abe Lincoln lookalike. Now, go to our website, democracynow.org, it, it's astounding. He was walking through, and a lot of the media interviewed him. He's dressed up as, and looks exactly like a Lincoln. And the media had done interviews with him, but, you know, it's really something what he looked like, so I asked him what happened to your party. And then I... <laughs> said, and he said, you know, we should forgive Todd for what he said, and I said, well, let's talk a little more about what it was, because Todd Aiken really does stand by what he said. He said that maybe he used the wrong words, not legitimate rape, they talk about forcible rape, and it's something that, um, that Paul Ryan also talks about. He has worked with Aiken through the years, and not just supporting legislation, but sponsoring legislation. This is Paul Ryan that continually talks about forcible rape. And what is non-forcible rape? And you know, I asked this of the Abe Lincoln lookalike who had been a state legislator. I said, this has been puzzling me because he talked about, of course, Todd Aiken shouldn't have said this when you're talking about brutal rape. And I said to him, and what is non-brutal rape? He said, oh, I mean, that's when, you know, when, uh, you do it to a girl or a woman who's inebriated, or you know, we call it slipping them a mickey. And we there we were on the floor of the Republican convention, I was holding my microphone, and I said, and that is non brutal right? These different definitions. But the reason the Republican Party, the lockstep message was do not talk about reproductive rights, continually switch it to the economy was because of not wanting to open this whole issue. Because Paul Ryan was the co-sponsor in the last years, for example, of the Sanctity of Life Bill, which the critics call the personhood bill, which bestows personhood on, an, on a fertilized zygote, giving that zygote the status of a person. You know, one of his first speeches he gave, Paul Ryan gave when he was alone after being chosen by Mitt Romney was at the Iowa State Fair where Romney famously said last year, corporations are people, my friend. Mm. So for Mitt Romney, corporations are people. For Paul Ryan, zygotes, one cell zygotes are people. Mm. But what about how we deal with already born, full-fledged, flesh and blood people in this country? with this issue, Paul Ryan sponsoring these bills that talk about forcible rape. He said, that's just boilerplate language, rape is rape. Well, that's a very important leap forward, but that's not what the legislation has been saying. You know, that Saturday morning when uh, Governor Romney announced his selection of the, of the, um, of the congressman from Wisconsin, of the uh, chair of the House Budget Committee, Paul Ryan, to be his running mate. It was in front of the USS Wisconsin, Norfolk, Virginia. And there they stood. And the person who introduced Mitt Romney was Governor McDonnell of Virginia. He might have been chosen as the running mate, but he, you know, faced a lot of ridicule when he was pushing this transvaginal ultrasound that women had to have, not medically indicated if they wanted to have an abortion, saying that women had to go through this procedure. 
Now, this kind of legislation, Paul Ryan also pushed forward. There is an escape route in it for women. They can turn their eyes away. But we can't turn our eyes away from these kinds of, well, I turn to the Republicans, and this is what I asked them last night. You are for smaller government. Please explain how it is that you're for smaller government for everything and everyone except women. to the New York delegation, I found Peter King, long time New York Congress member from Long Island, where I come from. And I talked to him about choice. He said, he said, I share the same views as Paul Ryan. And I said, well, what about the fact that in the Republican platform that uh, the opposition expressed to abortion, even in cases of rape and incest? And he said, well, you know, they always want to bring up this rape and incest thing, but Despite that, you shouldn't take it out on the fetus. Um, and so I said to him, and he said that that is murder. So I said to him, long time legislator in the establishment Republican Party, so what happens if a woman does not want to carry um, this fetus to term? Should she go to jail? He said, no, but the doctor should. The doctor should. Um, and I think what's important is for us just to have these conversations and for you to hear these conversations. What is happening? What are people thinking? What do people want to do with your lives, with your bodies? And then you make your own decision. But I was very familiar with this aisle that I've been walking up and down over the past few days. And so when I was across the convention hall, across the arena, and I saw the, on the Globetron, Governor Romney walking down as he's about to give this major address and I see he's shaking people's hands. I know all of those people very well on the uh, either side of the aisle as he's walking down and I realize he's going to be coming right up to uh, David Koch in a minute. And so I say to John, film the Globetron because it's showing us what he's doing. You know, the music is blaring and he is shaking people's hands and right there when he comes up to the New York delegation, he points at David Koch, he puts his hand on his shoulder, he shakes his hand and we see it on the Globetron and he moves on and he comes up on the stage and he gives his address. And we went home that night and I thought it's very important and symbolic to see the Romney Koch handshake and we called back to New York and said, okay, the video footage, go to the part where Ben Romney is walking down the aisle and Robbie Karen, our video, video producer, every night, all night, said, uh, I didn't see that. So I said, oh, well, you are not familiar with what he looks at. It's the part where you see the big stand that says New York. And right after that, Romney comes, we're just doing the physical description of the phone. He said, no, that's not there. And I said, what do you mean it's not there? You have the video, right, of Romney walking down the aisle. He said, yes, I have it. And so I said, well, what do you see after he comes to the New York delegation? He said, it's two young blonde women who are wearing boa scarves wrapped around the neck, and they're very enthusiastic, and then there's a big shot of the arena, and then it comes back to him shaking hands with the New York delegation. I said, what are you talking about? There were no two young women. That isn't it was Coke and Ed Cox. And he said, that's not what these women look like. And so, we today on March Town go back and look at it, the Romney Coke handshake. We showed two video, um, two series of frames of video. The video that was projected all through the room the, of the event as it happened, and the video that went out in the pool feed. Now, I don't know why this happened, but just at the moment before um, Mitt Romney came up to um, this extremely significant billionaire backer of the Tea Party and the Mitt Romney campaign, it switches to these young women and then to a faraway shot. And just as he passes and is shaking other people's hands, it comes back. I haven't figured out yet who it was who was control of that feed and how it was it was different from the feed that everyone was seeing in the hall. But it just shows you it's very important, as Woody Allen says, 90% of life is just showing up to be there, to see it with your own eyes. And so we put it frame by frame 
go to democracynow.org and you can click on it and you'll see it. in this country, how important who occupies the White House is. Years ago, I had a young woman on Democracy Now! talking about Guyana. And at the end of the conversation, I thanked her and ushered her out and um, was bringing in our guests on the US elections. And she said, I want to be a part of that discussion. And I said, oh, but no, we're talking about the US election. She said, right, I want to comment on it. I said, but why are you from Guyana? And she said, because I believe everyone in the world should get to vote for president of the United States. <laughs> and just to show you how powerful, um, we are the most powerful country on earth and what we do has repercussions around the world. Why it matters that you are engaged. It's not only for yourself, for your family, for your community, but you are determining a lot of the structure of lives of people around the world, and that's why it really does matter. Although, politics should not be determined by one person in the White House. Because really what is important is movements. Movements applying pressure on issues that you're deeply concerned about. Whether we're talking about war and peace, or healthcare in this country, whether we're talking about climate change, which brings us to why we need media like WMNF, like Pacifica Radio, like Democracy Now!, media that's not brought to you by the corporations that profit from war when we cover war, not brought to you by Boeing, by McDonnell Douglas, when we cover healthcare, not brought to you by the insurance companies or Big Pharma, when we cover the issue of climate change, not brought to you by the oil, the gas, the coal companies, the nuclear companies, but brought to you by listeners and viewers like you who are deeply concerned about the fate of the earth and know that your decisions need to be based on facts, on information. Information is power. Um, which is why we're here and we came to Tampa to cover the Republican Convention, to follow the money and to follow the protesters in the streets. You know, there was a lot of tweets going out on Monday, you know, the time of the hurricane that turned into a tropical storm, but still so bad in New Orleans, but you know, Tampa looked like it was going to be ground zero. Tweets of different Republican groups saying, ha ha, to the protesters, you know, just a couple hundred of protesters came out on Monday. And that was true, it was like four, four, five hundred protesters, and the organizer had hoped for thousands. But it couldn't help but think, my goodness, 50,000 people converged on Tampa for the Republican Convention, and they canceled it on Monday. These couple of hundred party souls 